It's Doug Gottlieb show here on Fox Sports Radio, as mentioned, live at the Tyrac.com studios. And we got to welcome him in. He's uh, now a veteran of the broadcasting world with the Amazon Thursday Night Football Package. But maybe more importantly, until Sunday night, he's a defending Super Bowl champion. He's Andrew Whitworth. He joins us here live at Radio Row in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good, man. I mean, uh, the rain's ending, you know. Your Super Bowl champ's only for one year, unfortunately, so there's got to be a new champion this week. What happened to the Rams this year? You know, I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. Obviously, people talk about Super Bowl hangovers and those things, but I think, you know, you look at their injuries and look at some of those things. It, it started early, and it just never ended. And I think they never found that moment to kind of get their feet in the ground and say, all right, where do we go from here? How do we improve? Uh, the injuries kind of put them in a, in, a, in a bad place, and then they never found it. I mean, you look at Cincinnati, they started rough, you know, and then kind of found themselves and got going. I think, you know, the Rams just really had too many injuries before they ever found that moment to get some momentum. It's really amazing you guys have that, that many injuries last year, right? I mean, heck, you lose your starting running back before the season ever gets going. I don't know how he came back from Achilles tendon tear that, that quickly. That was crazy. But, I mean, the, the last drive, it was one guy. Yep. One, one, one guy. You ever been a part of something like that? I haven't. I still go back to the, the ending of that game and think of who was on the field and how many people we'd lost in that moment. I can remember having a feeling there in, like, the third quarter where we're like, Man, uh, some of us, guys. Gets, yeah, like it's like I don't know if we're gonna be able to win the game just because we don't have anybody to play hardly, and uh, we were down to the last people that are dressed out at their positions. So uh, to think of being able to pull it off and, and the drive and everything else still blows my mind. Honestly, when I watch games, man, we're only gonna try to find Cooper Cup. This is what we're gonna try to do, and we were still able to do it and find a way to win the game. How does a dude like that get open when everybody knows he's getting the ball? I think when you really look at it, it's their relationship, Stafford and Cup, and the the time they'd put in, you know, him working his eyes and changing coverage with that and being able to find ways to get Cup in those holes was really special. And then a couple play calls that really determined the game there. The fourth and one was something that, you know, the way we did it was actually a way Cup and Stafford had come up with during the week that they liked better and, and ended up being a huge factor. Wait, wait, so, so take, take me through it. Okay, so it's it, your midweek. What's, yeah. what's the play called? Well, you just, you know, we have a, a kind of a fly motion where Cooper gets it on fourth and one and goes across the formation. And we worked on some different ways to do it throughout the week. You know, there's always different ways to start the motion or, you know, possibly come from a static position. And they had kind of, you know, done it both ways during the week, come up with the way they, they felt most comfortable doing it and uh, pulled it off in the game. And, and it's like you, you work on something like that and you think it's never going to come up. And all of a sudden it comes up in the game and you pull it off and you get the first down and the rest is history. You mentioned Cincinnati. Um, is it as simple as Joe Burrows changed that place? Like what? What? How has that? Because I was there. I called your game. Um, I actually did play by play twice in my life. It was a radio call against the Saints. This is like three, four years ago. The year before Burrow, and the Saints didn't punt the whole day, right? I mean, it was bad. The defense was bad. And now you look and they go to the Super Bowl last year. How it could have gone this year. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel – it feels like that's going to be the norm. Is it as simple as Burrow, or what, what has changed so dramatically there? I think Burrow is obviously the, uh, you know, probably the biggest part. But there's some other pieces there that I think when you watched and you said, hey, young Joe Burrow looks like he's going to be a legit quarterback in this league his, his rookie year even before the injury. But then you look at some of the pieces they add with the Trey Hendrickson you know, um, and some of those guys up front. And then uh, you know, obviously they've invested money this offseason. You can tell that there's an emphasis there of like we're going to add winners, which is really something they'd never done. When I was there in free agency, I mean, we, we maybe a handful of guys in my 12 years we ever signed like truly to start in free agency, that wasn't something they did. Right. But you can almost see not only Joe Burrow's play, but they've inspired him and given the front office confidence to say, we believe in this guy so much, we'll get out of our comfort zone a little bit, and every year we're going to look to acquire talent to help him be as successful as he's possible of being. So I think it's adding pieces around him, a belief in the building that they all believe in him and think that something really special is there, and he is really special, but they're also doing their part. And I think that sometimes that was the criticism. When we had our run from 11 to 16, you know, really going to the playoffs five times in a row, winning a couple divisions championships it was like man i don't know if there's been this huge investment from the front office in a piece here or there to take us over the edge no it was always guys that they would they would take a guy who had fallen in the draft you know uh, you know and and they would try and get 
try and build from within, right? And w- whether it was because they were cheap or because they were loyal, whatever it was, right? That was the whole Cincinnati deal. Yeah. And now going out and spending money uh, shows what they what – they, is it sustainable, I guess, is my question to you. Yeah, I think it's going to get tougher and tougher because that eventually they're going to run to a point where they're just not that those that team and that organization. They're not going to keep writing checks to people to come in the building. They're going to have to take care of their own. And, you know, you look at some of the special talent they've also drafted, um, that's always been their thing. They're going to keep their picks. They're going to try to draft well, and their success is going to come from the draft. And obviously they've done that with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and a number of guys. So now, though, at some point you're going to have to pay. And so how do you keep all those guys in the building with all the free agents that you've all also paid that's going to be the complex part for them the next couple of years is can they keep a team around Joe Burrow that he can go compete with the Andy Reid's always great off a of buy right and you're going to need that extra time because Philly's style is very different from how most teams play right? obviously Baltimore's certain amount of that you know where it's really a, 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 almost like a college scheme is that is that is that fair in terms of how much they run and how much they play 11 on 11 football how hard is that to prepare for? Obviously, you've been on the offense side, but how hard is that to prepare for when you haven't seen this level of dynamic overall athletes for Philadelphia, for Kansas City? Yeah, I think it's going to be really different for them because it's a style of football, like you mentioned, uh, similar to Baltimore in the sense of you're always going to have to account for the quarterback. And that is the most challenging part of defense in the NFL now. With all the rules, with everything else, some of these teams that can play 11-on-11 football where the quarterback's involved in the running game, you know, now the RPOs and all these things that come off of it, uh, it's really challenging to figure out how you're going to fit all these things. And then on top of it, what makes them so special they also have an offensive line that's unbelievable and yeah. played at a really high level. And then they also have skill guys who you're scared to death of and A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. So, you know, it's like, all right, on the edges, you know, out of Dallas Goddard, it's like where on defense do you want to say, okay, here's the guy we're going to let beat us. They're really complex that way, and it's that, man, I don't know if there's anybody that we want to say, all right, we trust everybody to just guard these guys or we just want to take away the RPO game because they can hurt you really bad in the passing game as well. And then Kansas City's kind of like you guys last year where – Kelsey's like the last man standing of what they got, and and I mean they've they've found ways to do it, but similar to their offensive line, Philadelphia's defensive line is outstanding. What are your thoughts on their offense, their style versus what Philadelphia does? Well, I think with Mahomes, you always have the potential of Mahomes type game. I mean, he's going to do special things, but give credit to Andy Reid. I mean, he always seems to have a plan for these type of teams. Like, hey, all right, this team's going to be a great pass rush team. They're going to get after Patrick Mahomes. Everybody's going to talk about it all week. Screen They're going to start the game, game off. Mahomes ain't going to have the ball for a split second to start the game. I mean, literally everything's going to be ball out of his hand. You know, the wide receiver motions, stuff out of the backfield of the backs. They're going to do it all to just get the ball out really fast, get you running sideline to sideline, and really take that mindset away from you a little bit and kind of feel out the game before they start some of that stuff. So Andy Reid's a genius with that. I mean, his screen game for years has always been talked about. The linemen, the receivers, everybody involved, it's it's master class of executing those. And so you know he's going to have a lot of that dialed up. He's got two weeks to get it all in. Uh, I think that's going to be their game plan is to try to get the ball out quick, do some of these screens, and then mix in their shots when they have a chance. All right, uh, you're working with Fisher Price this week. Um, the, your, the, the audio last year of you telling your kids after the Super Bowl was amazing that you're done playing football, right? It was incredible. Um, did you do the Fisher Price partnership just because yeah, I want to get free stuff for my kids? Uh, exactly. Anytime you got an opportunity to get something for the kids, you're in. But yeah, I mean, it's the uh, Super Bowl 57 Little People Collection, uh, Champion Collection. So you got the Chiefs and the Eagles. Uh, you know, it's a collector's item. So it's something that uh, everyone can go to, uh, you know, the website and uh, MattelCreations.com. And you can purchase whichever team you think's winning the Super Bowl. They will only fulfill the order of the team that wins, though. So you, you get your money back if your team loses. You, that's your consolation prize, I guess. But uh, right now, I don't know if it means anything. We look at a lot of statistics all the sure, time. Sure, Right now, the Eagles are leading in pre-order sales. So well, there you go. Maybe may, we're always reaching as analysts. Maybe that's it <laughs> right here. Okay, it's the Fisher Price, uh, you know, percentage of uh, pre-order sales that's going to tell us the Eagles are winning the Super Bowl. Wait, you had a great year in broadcasting. Can't wait to see you Thursday nights next year. Thanks so much for joining us, and thanks to Fisher Price for letting you have us. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Anytime.